In this video, I want to give you an update on the Cashless Society again and RFID technology. Uh, I have some updated articles here that I wanted to show you. One is from the Wall Street Journal. It says, when information storage gets under your skin, tiny implants can replace keys, store business cards, and medical data, and eventually a lot more. And this is coming from the Wall Street Journal. And here it shows a little uh, syringe here to inject that RFID uh, microchip. Uh, I've seen people uh, even on YouTube be able to start their cars by because they're implanted by um, tapping their, their wrist to their car, um, getting into their places of, of business. Uh, some countries are, are doing this. Uh, people are volunteering in order to pay for things. So it's right now it's become it's an option and, and Satan is trying to market it to the world as looking cool and trendy. Uh, don't you want it? So, and, and that everyone's going to get on board eventually, according to Revelation chapter 13. Members of the so-called body hacker movement, you know, and, and some call it biohacking, have been implanting RFID chips under their skin, programming them to perform various tasks. Patrick Palman doesn't have to worry about forgetting his keys and being locked out of his apartment. That is because he doesn't need a key anymore. He simply unlocks the door with a wave of his hand. The 32-year-old IT expert from the Dutch city of Heerlien is one of a growing number of people with electronic implants under their skin, mostly to use as keys for identification. Okay, so it goes on to say it's a very long article, but it says here down below, the implants can be activated and scanned by readers that use radio frequency identification technology, or RFID. Those include ordinary smartphones and readers already installed in office buildings to allow entrance with a common ID card. So if you want to go on to read more about this, it says here what I found interesting. Uh, it says that it can be used to store businesses, replace your keys, whether it's to start your car, get into your, uh, your home, medical data, uh, and of course, finances, money. So this is from the Wall Street Journal, and you can look that up, look that article up. I have another one here for you. Like I said, I like to do quick updates for you, sometimes weekly, on, on the latest RFID news. Uh, this is from the People's Pundit Daily. It's called Human Chip Implants Move Mainstream Despite Mark of the Beast Fears. Isn't that interesting? And this woman has a, uh, a barcode on her forehead here. So this article says here, human chip implants move mainstream despite Mark of the Beast fears. RFID technology, formerly the stuff of animal identification chip implants, now moved into the human hand, making it no longer a topic of underground discussion. And of course we know according to Revelation chapter 13 uh, that the right hand of the forehead will be used to be uh, scanned for buying and selling purposes. Okay, so I just wanted to give you an update on this. It says, call it the coolness factor. Blame the millennial mindset of convenience at all costs or shrug it off as a natural technological progression. So see, they're already calling it cool. The inability of a society to close a Pandora's box once it's been opened. Isn't that interesting? I'm sorry, yeah, it's the inability of a society to close a Pandora's box once it's been opened. But what's becoming increasingly clear is what used to be regarded as creepy and science fiction-like has now gone mainstream. The take RFID technology, formerly the stuff of animal identification chip implants, the technology is now moved into the human hand and forehead. It's not, as this headline from the mainstream CBS News shows, exactly a topic of underground discussion any longer. So it goes on to say, uh, say here in the article, meet the humans that are taking this uh, microchip. The once queasy technology seems destined to grow popularity. Catholic Online may have recently written how a microchip implanted on human beings has chilling implications, conjuring up images of the mark of the beast. So there are even Catholic sources online that are calling this the mark of the beast. It says Catholic Online. I take it that this is a... Um, uh, a news outlet for Catholics, is now calling it the mark of the beast, as mentioned in the book of Revelation. But in the same article, it was noted at length, the boon for society from chip implant technology is being touted as just too good to pass up. 
But isn't that how Satan markets things? It's too good to pass up. It's convenient. It's trendy. It's cool, they're saying. Everybody wants one. The genie's out, and he ain't headed back into his lamp anytime soon, the article says. Fox News reported this way back in 2014. For soldiers and journalists in war zones, such as an implant could be the difference between life and death. A chip implant could also help law enforcement quickly locate a kidnapped child, help monitor the location of people with Alzheimer's, and so on. All good, inarguably so. Meanwhile, the convenience side is this. Chip implants and hands could make it easy and fast to open a locked door, speed through security checkpoint in an airport. Remember, I made a video about that recently, showing you a man who went right through TSA security with a um, microchip implant. Provide crucial medical information to emergency response, and don't forget the quick pay option. Swipe your hand or swipe your forehead. It says customers may one day be able to pay for purchases simply by flashing a hand over a scanner. Revelation chapter 13, guys, <laughs> that no one may buy or sell, save he that has a mark in the right hand or the forehead. And this is a very lengthy article as well, but like I said, I just wanted to do a weekly update for you. This is called the People's Pundit Daily Human Chip Implants Move Mainstream Despite Mark of the Beast Fears. So I wanted to show you that. And I have one more that I could show you. And um, let me see, I try and keep up with these things as often as I can for you. Okay, this is called, okay, this is from an article called, uh, I'm sorry, a website called M2. It's called www.m2now.com. And it says, these tiny electrical implants are the future you can have right now. And notice the eye, they're even having implants in eyes, you know, technology is coming out with that to enhance the eyes. This is that biohacking that, uh, that I've been telling you about. If you're highly irritated at jingling a dozen keys in your pocket all day or whipping out a card for payments or identification, look no further than the world of biohacking. While it might seem as if it's uh, the modernization of the occult, ah, oh, interesting the modernization of the occult. There are roughly 30,000 to 50,000 people in the world with biohacks. What is biohacking, you ask? Simply, it's the act of augmenting one's body with the use of tiny electrical implants. It says you can use these chips as keys, identification, or st storage of personal information. It says, or purchases. The tags can't be lost as they live under your skin. And that's interesting, they say live under the skin because there are some RFID technology in, uh, implants that can actually grow into the tissue in your body. Once it's implanted, it meshes with the tissue in your body, which I find very interesting. Okay, let me see here. All right, it can also be used as a fantastic tool in the medical world. Think of the emergency ambulance tags that elderly people have just in case. I think I would get on board with the biohacking craze, this person says. I can see the benefits of a keyless entry with a unique RFID identity bound to my person. You don't need to worry about losing keys or passports. You could even have some sort of system in place to turn on your car with your chips in your hands. Plus, it could pave the way for enhancing the human body, improve vision, stamina, strength, and the possibilities are endless, don't you think? So again, this is just my way of bringing you, uh, I, try and give, I try and bring uh, weekly information out to you about RFID, RFID technology uh, and relate it to Revelation chapter 13. So this is pretty much a refresher, but like I said, I try and get on board with these subjects as often as I can to keep them fresh in your mind. Uh, Revelation chapter 13, he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, otherwise they cannot buy or sell. He causes it. It'll, society will eventually go this way. Um, I wanted to end this video with uh, something a little bit off topic. Um, I have recently signed up for a Twitter account. Um, I haven't used it before. You know, I usually just use Facebook or YouTube. Um, but if uh, you want to follow my Twitter account, I, I don't post every single day, but every now and then I'll post a scripture or I'll post something prophetic on there or I'll post videos on there. Um, but my Twitter account is He Said My Name. 
So instead of, you know, my channel account is Yeshua said my name, my Twitter account is he said my name. So if you want to look that up and look me up on Twitter, you can, and I'd be happy to fellowship with you there as well. He said my name and you'll find my account there. Uh, so send me a tweet. I'll send you a tweet. Uh, you know, let's post scriptures. Let's edify one another. Like I said, I just recently signed up for this. So this is another way that we can fellowship with one another, keep each other updated on prophecy topics. So, uh, but anyway, thank you for listening. Um, I just wanted to bring this to you to keep you informed each week of what's happening in the RFID world, according to Revelation chapter 13, with this buying and selling and biohacking. Thank you for listening and have a great day.